here. We're so happy to have you here this morning. Yes, whether you're here in person or online, we're really excited to worship with you today. We want to bring your attention to the fact that the Israel trip was canceled that was scheduled for June uh, just due to the uncertainties, and so it will be rescheduled, and so as soon as we have a date for that, we'll be sure to let you know. Yes, also young adults ages 18 through 25, we have this new Bible study going on called The Merge. Um, we've been having it on Thursday night. But this weekend, February 13th at 6 o'clock, we're going to be meeting here at the church for some fun fellowship, some dinner and games. So come out and join us for that. And on March 12th and 13th, we will be having the Strength to Stand student tour here at Crossroads. So we're very excited about that. Parents, make sure your youth is signed up to attend that event. And there will be opportunities to volunteer, so make sure you're watching your email for those notifications. We're so excited about that event here at Crossroads. Yes, I think that's all we have for today, so let's go worship together. Bye! Yeah. 
Bowl Sunday, right? If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're on the winning team. Amen? For eternity. That's what's, that's what's just so great about our God is that He wins every round. He is Almighty God. We've come here to worship Him this morning. We've got a, a guest speaker today that, that I'm just anxious, anxious to hear Mr. Danny come and speak to us and share from his heart. This morning, hopefully you've come here to worship him, the King of Kings. If you're online, thank you for being here. We got some weather last night, but those of you who are here with us today, you made it in. You braved it in. You got here. It was tough, I know, but you forged a way and you got here, so thank you for being here. But I'm not throwing any shade at you online. Thank you for being here, too. Thank you for just uh, just being with us. You're, you're here with us, and hey, this signal goes out to whomever will go to our YouTube channel and they can see a worship service here this morning. And hopefully what they see are people who are trying to follow Jesus, coming here to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, people who are following him and trying our best to be obedient to him. And that's what we want to do. And this morning, if you're visiting with us, we just want you to feel welcome. We want you to feel like you're part of us because you are. You're, you're our family. And uh, this morning, you're our special guest. If you've come here this morning and it's your first time uh, visiting with us, we've got a way for you just to reach out to us and do that be online, you can be here, and there you see on our screen there, if you'll just text, and you'll put those those letters, C-B-C-G-U-E-S-T, and then you'll text it to that number, 94090. Um, we'll get that message, and we'll we'll answer you back, and we'll, we'll talk with you a little bit, and we'd love to just know that you're here with us this morning, amen? Man, wasn't our band great this morning? Franklin, I just want you to know, man, that mix was awesome. Zach's guitar was phenomenal. Zach, thank you so much for your for your gifts. Thank our whole band for your gifts. And uh, man, let's just go and worship him this morning, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We get an opportunity to do that here freely, so let's do that. Will you join me in prayer this morning? Father, as we come before you today, we pray that you will know that our worship today is genuine. Father, I pray that, Lord, whatever the stresses of life that came in here with us this morning. That, Father, what you would do is that you would let us lay them down at your feet this morning. Lay our burdens down at your feet. And, Father, to praise and worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. What an awesome opportunity it is to do that today. And, Father, today I pray if there's someone here, either physically or online, that has never, ever given their heart and life to you. They've never surrendered. Lord, and, and, and followed you, I pray today that, Lord, today would be the day of their salvation. I pray today that if there's someone here that just needs someone to walk beside them because of troubles in their life, that, Lord, today would be the day that they would realize that we here at Crossroads would love to talk with them, and we would love to just come along beside of them and, and help them. Father, more than that, this morning, all of these things, we lay at your feet, and we come here to worship you. Lord, thank you for our band. Thank you for Danny who came this morning out of obedience to speak to us. And I pray that you would bless our music and bless our worship. And, Lord, this morning that you would bless our speaker. But Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy of our praise, our songs, our prayers. Lord, the reading of your word, the following of you. And, Lord, this morning we worship you. And so, Lord, this morning I pray that you have a great big smile upon your face because of our worship to you. Lord, we love you, and we pray this in your name. And Crossroads said, amen. Will you all stand and worship with us this morning? Well, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. And I've heard a tender Dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am, and I've seen many searching for answers for 
but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we can say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To Holding me and 
until the darkness gleams. Your Father to the fatherless, Redeemer of my soul. My life is yours forever. My heart will always know your mercy saved me. Mercy made me whole. Amen. Your mercy found me. You called me as your own. Here I stand, a child of yours, broken and in need of you. Break these chains and wash my guilt away. Healer of my brokenness, my weary soul will find its rest. You are my strength, the lifter of my head. You're greater than my yesterdays. You hold me close today. You are the Lord of my tomorrows. My heart will always say, You're greater than my yesterdays. You hold me close today. You're the Lord of my tomorrows. My heart will always say, Your mercy saved me. Mercy made me whole. Me whole. Your morning in your house of worship, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the gift that we have to be among our, our fellow believers, Lord, the body of Christ. And God, I pray that we will be, God, the hospital for those who need you to come to. Father, may we not lose sight of what our mission is, what our purpose is. We are here to be kingdom builders. 
We are here to spread your message. We are here to share the impact you've had in our lives and on our hearts. And Father, I pray that you will allow us to remember every day the blessing that we have of life. And I pray, God, as we continue in our time of worship in your word, Lord, I pray that our speaker, Father, will be filled with your spirit. God, that there will be no um, distraction, Lord, that we bind the devil and his demons of distraction. God, in Jesus' name, we ask that your spirit move in this place today. God, allow us to walk out different than when we came in. Allow our hearts, minds, ears be open to what you have to say. In Jesus' holy name we ask. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. So God is so good. He's allowed me to enjoy the fellowship of a new friend. His name is Danny Copeland. And Danny comes to us all the way from South Georgia. And Danny, I guess the, the snow was uh, a little different than maybe what you see in South Georgia, right? Yeah? <laughs> Sand, there you go. There you go. Yeah, so you bring with you today uh, your beautiful wife, Joanne. Joanne, so glad to have you, your son Joshua, David. Uh, you are friends of the Camacho family, and your uh, past... <laughs> what did I say? You said Camacho. <laughs> Never mind. So, um, Danny, God blessed you in, mm -hmm. in many ways, and one of the ways is with a, the physical ability to play the game of football. And football, I guess, is on the hearts and minds of many today because of what's happening today in Super Bowl Sunday. We've got a video clip I want to show to the congregation. It's just a few plays that Danny was involved in as he was playing in the National Football League for some six years. Uh, can we go ahead and fire that clip? Now, there's not much sound to it, Danny, so if you want to narrate what we're seeing here, that's fine. Explain why you did what you did. <laughs> this okay. is Danny Copeland as he was playing for the Washington Redskins. I guess this is against the New York Giants. Bill Sims. Boy, I'm getting old. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. That's Where do you see the, the different angle? That, that's quite the catch. Now the catch and falling on the ground. <laughs> it was exciting. Concussion came after that when the guy slapped me upside the head on the sideline. Now I'm not sure about this play, I gotta tell you. Okay, you are fast. There's no question. <laughs> that <laughs> <laughs> You might want to fast forward some of this. We're in church. <laughs> yeah. Now you walk off the field here kind of shaking your head. Is there a reason? Uh, because I shook my head a lot back then, Rich. <laughs> this is where you shake it off. Just shake it off. Yeah. Stomp it. <laughs> I grew up a Cowboys fan. So. I'm sorry. Yeah. Nice. And I guess you see him like that in Jesus' name. And there you go. There you go. Repent, you sinner. No. That's exactly right. Excuse me. I'm going to grab some. We are so blessed to have you with us. What, what I want to do is just kind of turn the service over to you. God bless you who are joining us online today. Uh, we're just going to let God lead and uh, excited to hear your story. You played in the National Football League for six years mm -hmm. and I was kind of doing a little research and it was really at the height of your career 
that you said that's enough. Or God yeah. said that's enough. I'll right. let you tell your story. Okay. God bless you. Welcome to Crossroads. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Crossroads is, is great to be with you all. Um, Matt contacted me, I don't know, maybe two months ago and asked me about coming. And uh, I'm going to be honest, we stay really busy with um, work, kids, ministry, and I'm usually taking time to, uh, to make decisions on whether to go or or to not go when we're called on to, to come and share. My wife happened to have seven children, so we're busy. So, <laughs> but what I really want to do is be faithful to the Lord. It's, uh, again, when he called, I felt like right away I'm supposed to go to Crossroads. And I want to share a little bit with you guys about myself um, I love, obviously, we'll get into the testimony, but um, I am South Georgia country. That's me in a nutshell. I'm South Georgia country. I was blessed. Uh, Mercy found me on the campus of Eastern Kentucky University when I was a mess, um, even messier than that. And um, I went through, you know, hills and valleys, a lot of challenges up and down. I was a kid that lived to play football. Football is the game in South Georgia. And uh, I grew up wanting to play, grew up wanting to be a professional football player. Not only that, I wanted to be the absolute best professional football player in the world ever to walk the planet. That was the way I lived. And so I lived in hot pursuit of it. Um, maybe, David, can you stand up for me? Our David uh, is, uh, y'all don't clap for him. Okay, go ahead, give him a clap. <laughs> David loves applause even when he does nothing he loves applause so I, younger than that I learned to identify with the South Georgia game and chased it through middle school I finally got an opportunity to play in middle school in my little town of a thousand people we had um, almost no recreation we had a little bit of little league baseball but no football so seventh grade, I finally get an opportunity to put the pads in the pants, and, and I put them in backwards. Um, but, but that was my introduction. And again, I, I pursued it with everything in me. Now, me at seventh grade, 13 years old, David's eight, I might have been, I might have been half his size. I was taller, but at that time, I was maybe all of 70 pounds soaking wet uh, eighth grade. <laughs> I had a growth spurt. I made it up to 90 pounds by the end of eighth grade, but I wasn't a scale watcher. Somebody weighed me. That was what was on the scale. I was a professional football player. I was the best in the world, and that was going to happen. It had already happened here, and at some point, I'm going to show you guys, because y'all going to watch me on TV. So... <laughs> I was the best. Coaches just didn't think so. <laughs> high school football, again, I, I make it onto the campus of Central High School down in Thomasville, Georgia. And I walk into that environment. First, it's, you know, this stuff always comes back. Um, <laughs> it's like yesterday. But uh, I'm a whole 108 pounds at that time. I shot up to 5'8", and not much material. As a matter of fact, if you really want to know how good I was at that point, for you guys that have played pickup sports, pick up basketball, whatever, and we choose teams, you know, we choose sides, and then finally you get down to that last guy, and you really don't want him on your team, but you go, come on, man. You're looking at, come on, man. <laughs> I was, I'm giving you my story. I'm giving you my truth. But, again, I pursued it with everything in me. I read books on, on running faster. I was one of the slowest humans ever to enter our county. Um, but I read books on, on how to get faster, and I would try to eat the best stuff, convince my mama in South Georgia to not put the fat in the greens. I mean, I was really doing this, right? So, so 
it was that type of pursuit for four years of high school, then that type of pursuit for four years of college. Finally, I get drafted to go up to Cleveland. At that time, I didn't even know Cleveland had a football team. I'm a college football player. I didn't know Cleveland had a football team. <laughs> and they said, Cleveland. And I said, where is that? It's only five hours north of where I was at Eastern Kentucky University. I said, Eastern Kentucky, I didn't put your hands over your heart. Go ahead, put your hand right here. Eastern Kentucky University. Now, um, I got to, I got drafted in the ninth round. Football geniuses, how many rounds in the draft right now? <laughs> That's okay, that's how good I was. They don't even have those rounds anymore. I was a ninth round draft choice. That's how good I was. But I'm finally there as far as having this opportunity, maybe, to play in the National Football League. But I'm laying in my, my bed one night during the summer sessions, and uh, I'm laying there and I'm just thinking, yeah, I'm here. Wow, I'm finally here. So what do I do? What's the next step? And I was really kind of asking the Lord, what's, what's the next step? For eight years prior to that, I had done push-ups every night before I went to bed. I didn't matter what the situation was when I got home. Sometimes I get home from work in high school. It might be 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, I would not let my head hit the pillow until I got down on the floor and knocked out those push-ups. Just my commitment to me at the time. I'd heard uh, l young lady Tanya Crevier, some of you might remember that name, but Tanya was a world champion basketball uh, handler and she did these spinning, dribbling exhibitions, just super. Well, she came to our high school when I was a ninth grader, shared her testimony, and she talked about what was necessary for her to grow stronger hands, stronger fingers, get her upper body stronger, so she could do what she did with the basketball. So I just adopted that as, a, again, a wannabe that was looking for some answers. And it worked at that point. Um, my physical strength was a part of the Cleveland Browns' interest. So all in all, I'm, I'm there. I'm laying in that bed, and I'm thinking, what do I do at this point? Because I really haven't made it. I'm in a, somebody's camp, I'm in an organization. I got a big fat signing bonus, $13,000. Oh, you thought everybody was rich, didn't you? Thirteen five to be exact. Anyway, I'm, so I get down on the floor and I started doing those push-ups because I realized, yeah, nothing's really happened. I'm here, but I haven't made a team. The deal is to make a team. Well, not really. Because if you're an athlete, we got to have any athletes, any former athletes in the house, anybody? Yeah, it's, come on, more of y'all wash your hands than that. Raise your hands up. So here's the deal. I'm that guy that's wanting to be that guy. Athletes know what I mean? I'm, I'm that guy that's really wanting to be a, a superstar in this game. I hadn't done anything yet, but I'm really wanting to be a part of somebody's starting 11. So, again, I continued the pursuit, doing everything that I knew to do that was right. Working out, <laughs> it seemed like all the time, and just really cherishing that opportunity because we get into camp, I want to show them. Been waiting on this all my life. We get into camp, I'm going to show them. Well, we got into camp and I showed them. Showed them how fast I could pull my first hamstring. <laughs> so my first season of professional football, I became a great football watcher. I'm on injury reserve. We're three days into training camp, and I'm on injury reserve in three days. So where do we go from here? What needs to happen? Keep showing them. Keep, keep doing all that you've done to get to this point. You keep showing them. Keep pressing. Keep climbing. First to show up, 
last to leave. You guys know that formula, right? <laughs> it didn't work. So I went through probably the most miserable season of football because I couldn't participate. Maybe most miserable season of life that I had lived to that point. It was really tough. So end of, I did get to practice. After five weeks or so, I, I get to practice. And uh, back then, they, the introduction of free agency, as we see it now, was a system called Plan B free agency in which <laughs> teams protected 37 of their players and everybody else on the roster, including me was given opportunity to go out and shop your services and see if anybody else is interested because we show sure ain't. <laughs> so we, my agent starts to shop me and um, at the time, the Browns, um, Marty Schottenheimer as a coach there, was not sitting real well with the uh, Cleveland Browns organization. All in all, he resigns, goes down to Kansas City, Personally, uh, 23 years old, I think. I think it's in my best interest because I've shown these guys that I will work and I will work hard. So I followed that group down to Kansas City. And worse, got worse, sir. Is that a word? Worse, sir? It, <laughs> it became terrible. I am still doing all that my parents had taught me, all that good teachers, great Sunday school teachers all of the adults around me in my life, all my life, had taught me to do. And that was give them the best that I have. I'm not knocking that, but I want us to understand sometimes your best seemingly may not be enough for the moment. But God is always faithful. God is always faithful. It was a turbulent two years with the Kansas City Chiefs. Now somebody wants to ask me, who you have in the Super Bowl? <laughs> They're not my favorite team. Anyway, I love Patrick Mahomes. Um, I did not have a great time in Kansas City. Actually, I, that's where I met my wife. Join, will you stand up for our folks, please? Can we give her at least two claps? Thank you. Um, so all in all, needless to say, I came out of uh, Kansas City with a gold nugget, but with the team and in that environment, and as a person in the work world, and for a person that's seeking rewards for my efforts, that wasn't happening. Got to play a lot of special teams, right? It's good to be on the team and playing and contributing and all those things. But again, when you're a player, when you're, when, when you're especially that close to being able to make what your heart desires happen, and it's not happening. And to be honest, I felt like I got passed over a time or two for the big promotions. Anybody ever been there? I got passed over, yeah. I just saw two of the deacons like, over here, no. <laughs> that was the way things were kind of rolling in my life. So, spent two years there, um, got great counsel, actually. I, I don't want to miss this, but I got great counsel from a guy that eventually would become my father-in-law. This guy took me down into his basement. We're just meeting. I really like this daughter, so I'm going to try to make an impression. So. When he offered to take me down in the basement, I'm first going in the basement. <laughs> what y'all got in the basement? <laughs> but I followed him into the basement. And he says, and this was genius. He says, you know, the Lord sees you and the tough spot that you're in right now. And I'm thinking, you know, that's kind of the problem. I know he sees me in this mess. I know he sees it. But he's not, he's not doing anything about it. 
It's tough. It was gut-wrenching tough for that two years. And I'm just a guy in pursuit of a goal. Again, maybe the Passover thing, <clears throat> excuse me, a little much, but all in all, God sees it. He's not doing anything about it. What's the problem with me? And have you guys ever internalized some of that stuff? And what did I do to deserve this? <laughs> Mercy found me. I really didn't deserve anything. I didn't. None of us do. So, a guy named Gibbs called my apartment. Joan and I were newlyweds, and uh, Joe Gibbs calls us how he found my phone number. I will <laughs> never know, but you guys ever hear Joe Gibbs? Guy? Yeah. He, he's won a thing or two in his lifetime. Um, for you guys that don't know, Joe Gibbs is a, I know the women know this, but He's a three-time Super Bowl winner, and uh, he's, if it's got a motor in it, I think they've won a championship with it at this point, race cars, motorcycles, whatever. Um, he calls, and we're laying on the bed, and at this point, I'm totally, emotionally, I'm spent. I, I really, you know, I'm, I'm tired of chasing whatever this game has to offer, and again, this is my mindset. I told y'all I'm country. At that point, you know, pack it up, Move back home, get you a brood of chickens, just live it out. You're laughing. That was where I was. It's a whole lot easier to live down in South Georgia than pay a couple of kids to, you know, try and live up in Northern Virginia. It's expensive up there. But all in all, we're listening to this guy on the telephone. And he sounds so sincere, pretty much saying, we'll give you a chance. But he said it this way. And initially, I thought this was a dirty pool. He said, I heard you're a Christian. He didn't say it like that. But that was the way I received it. I heard you're a Christian. We have some great Christian families on our team. We'd like for you to come over and take a look, you and your wife to come over and take a look. And it's one of those things where you go, how do you know I'm married? We just got married two weeks ago. How's he? <laughs> but we'd like for you and your wife to come over and meet some of our people and just take a look. We believe you fit what we're trying to do. I've been given recruiting pitches before, but nobody had rolled out the Christian pitch. So I'm thinking, this joker right here is low. <laughs> He'll reach for anything <laughs> to try and, and get you to come. But I really felt like I sensed some sincerity in his voice as I'm listening to the answer machine. You guys know what an answer machine is? Y'all old enough to know? Okay, all right, answer machine. I kind of remember who I'm talking to. My wife says, Joanne says, are you going to, going to take that? Well, then we get a click, and she says, are you going to call the guy back? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm tired. And I was. I was just, just really exhausted from the pursuit. But I felt like I should call that guy back because he might be doing what he spoke over the phone. They might be trying to do something with a bunch of Christians in Washington, D.C. Go figure that out. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. <laughs> they, they might be trying to do something with some Christians in Washington, D.C. We took the, the trip. They had assembled some wives to take my new bride out and just kind of introduce her, not, not give her the, you know, the red carpet, but just bless her with the women that were married to these knuckleheads on the football team. 
I, and I, to be honest, I thought that was really cool. And then I was introduced to some guys who were pretty much the same. These are the believers on the team, or some of them. And I thought, wow, what a welcoming committee. What a welcoming committee. Any of you guys in here work in public business or education or any of those other sinful places? No, any of you guys work in places where, you know, there might be some restrictions in what you are allowed to say or how you are allowed to approach other people work in those oppressive places? Yeah, so did I say that? Okay, um, I'm not sorry. So here's the thing. Because I believe, I truly believe, and more so now because of the experiences with the Washington team, that so much of what has happened to us as a church and as a body of believers just might be somewhat maybe self-imposed, maybe like self-inflicted wounds even. And that's what I came to share with you all. So we make the leap to Washington. We followed these Christians and uh, made the leap to, to the Washington Redskins organization. I'm there um, maybe two weeks and I meet a little guy named Daryl Green. If you guys know that name, football people. Met Daryl Green, had heard a lot about Daryl Green. You can't miss the fact, the thought, if you're into football, this was the fastest guy in the league. Maybe the fastest guy, honestly, to ever put on a pair of cleats. I mean, he could just flat out move. Um, Daryl came to my locker. It's like two lockers down. And he says, Copeland, this is what I do for training. Would you like to come join me? Training. Whoa. Now, you have to see where I am as, a, as an athlete and competitor, and that's like the business guy in the room, <laughs> some you know, super guy, super producer in the world of business, say Matt Camacho, comes up and says, hey, I want to tutor you in business. Daryl Green is going to give me an opportunity to go out and train with him. Oh, my goodness. Now, you can't show in that environment that you're not a big guy with muscles, but I kind of shrunk to like 13-year-old cheerleader. I was like, yes, sir. Do I say yes, sir? Can't say yes, sir. Um, how do I express this? I was, so, yes! Can't do it like that. Yeah, man. <laughs> Meet you over there tomorrow. <laughs> that's, again, that's where I was. And he took me out to George Mason University and introduced me to a level of training that I didn't even think existed. Just, just bless my socks off. At the same time, almost killed me, right? So he does this heel training, and he tells me I'm gonna run half of what he runs on the hill. Oh, South Georgia just started to rise up. Well, I'm gonna do half of what he does. He must be, woo, I'm gonna have to show him half. Woo, I was offended. I was offended. I'm going to do half of your workout. When I got to half of my half, and I started thanking the Lord because my legs didn't know where they wanted to go. <laughs> Jesus, thank you. Um, I could die right here. I, I could die. That's okay. I will. This is what I want. Made it through that moment. We finish up, and I'm thinking... That, okay, that was different. That was, he does different. This guy is, okay, this, I didn't know that level existed. And then the guy that was with us, Tim Johnson's 6'3", maybe 285 at the time, he says, uh, hey, man, you ready to go get it? I thought we were done. I thought it was time to go to the house, get some water or something, because that kid's like, man, I can't, ooh, let me get some of this. <laughs> So, Daryl says, yeah, let's go get it. Go get what? So I asked 
Tim, so what are we about to do? And he says, well, we're going to run the big hill now. <laughs> so we turn a couple of corners at George Mason University, go out to the back of the, the school, three intramural fields sitting side by side, and then there's, at the end of it, is a hill that was even bigger than the first thing that I almost just died on. It's like... But at that point, I'm starting to recover, and I'm feeling you know, pretty good that I, I made it through the first round, and maybe I'll get my second win right here, and, and, and you know, it'll, it'll go well. Well, it didn't go well. I, I, I ran into the same thing, but I made it out. A couple of weeks later, we're sitting in a team Bible study, and Daryl sharing his testimony. I was sitting right across from him. His chair was aimed in my direction. I was actually sitting on the floor. And he says, you know, this time of year, I, I don't take any, um, any appearances because the Lord has given me something. And he's given me what's necessary to protect it. I said, this time of year, from April to June, I don't take any appearances. And I'm thinking, I sat right beside this guy, and he showed me a letter from a neighborhood Walmart. I kid you not, it's Walmart right there in the neighborhood. And that Walmart was requesting an autograph signing, asking him to come there in the neighborhood, 45 minutes, sign autographs, and $10,000. That's almost half my salary. <laughs> He doesn't take those. God has given me something, and he's given me something to protect it. He said, you know, I'm on that hill six days a week. I was going three days with him. I just totally didn't know he was doing this thing six days a week. But I heard him say, God has given me something. And he's given me what I need to protect it. So, wow. I'm going to be honest again. I wasn't even used to people speaking like that in the Bible studies. Just if I'm going to be real. This guy. Believe God. This guy trusted God. I wasn't there yet. Please hear me. I had said a sinner's prayer, and I believe if I died on that hill, <laughs> Lord, please don't let it be today, that day, but I knew my life was en route to heaven. Man, what's this thing of God giving you stuff? And then he's giving you more stuff. So around that time, I, um, I'm in my first practice, first defensive practice with my new team. And I'm standing in, yeah, kind of my customary football position. I'm watching the defense, day one. Then this guy comes up, parks himself right here beside me. And he starts to explain to me what's about to happen with the defensive football team and what the offense is doing and how the defense is going to counter that. And beside me is an animal by name Clarence Bond. Clarence Bond chose in the moment to begin teaching me, new kid on the block, how to play this position on defense. Problem, Clarence Vaughn and I played the same position. Our starting safety for the Washington Redskins was a killer by the name of Alvin Walton. They called him Dirty Al. Dirty Al was one of the baddest dudes in the league. 
he was going to be the starting safety for the Washington Redskins. So that meant this guy on my left flank and yours truly, they're going to be fighting for a job. Let me rewind a little bit further. Part of that welcoming committee that welcomed my wife into the new team, his wife was a part of that welcoming committee that welcomed us. In case y'all don't see it, there's not room for both of these families with the Washington Redskins. Somebody goes, somebody stays. This guy is choosing to teach me the job. Totally blew my mind. I, he was one of those original Christians that had shown up at that hotel to help bless me on the trip to Washington. So you guys have seen this before, but kind of perfect timing maybe to bring it back. So Jesus has asked, what's the greatest Lord of these commandments you've given us? He said, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your strength. And he said, the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. This ain't right. Dude, we're competing for a job. He's being faithful to share what God has given him. Clarence Vaughn knew me as a believer. I knew him the same. But when this is going on, and you used to compete it, because that's us, right? It's what we do. Now, some of our necks are getting stiff. We don't want, well, kind of, no, this is not a trick question. That's our culture. That's what we do. So much of what we do in the United States is built is formed around competing, right? So that had been life for me. And here's a guy that all he knows is, I'm supposed to help you. Wow. I didn't wow at the time. I just wondered, man, is he trying to set me up? What's, what's, what's up with this? Clarence Vaughn was being faithful to God. Thankfully, as a believer, that was all that mattered to him. That was all he knew. So hopefully, as we leave here, hopefully we will kind of revisit that whole thought. What happens, man, if we really, if we choose to engage with that stuff that God has given us about loving him and loving each other? What happens on the wings of that? Two commandments. Game, set, match. Love me with everything. Be okay with sharing your stuff with the people I give you. It was cool. It got better than that. So I get an injury <laughs> somewhere towards the the middle of that season, I got an injury, twisted my foot. So I make it off the field, go over, sit on the bench, and uh, Daryl comes, <laughs> gets right up in my face. I'm sitting on the bench, and he was mad. But I'm, how tall was Daryl? Um, anyway, joke. <laughs> Daryl gets down on, on his knee in front of me. He says, you want to go back in the game? Say, like, dude, is that a pop quiz or something? I'm a professional football player. Yes, I want to go back. I didn't say that. I didn't do that. But I'm questioning, why is he asking me if I want to go back in the football game? Do you want to go back in the game? Yeah, 
I mean, I want to want to go back in the game. You start praising the Lord with your mouth. Dude, there's 70,000 people out here. We're playing a football game. He said, if you want to go back in the game, you get up and you walk down this sideline and you start praising Jesus with your mouth. So I got up. This guy's a leader. I knew without a doubt I could trust this guy for his relationship with the Lord. I just believed in the moment God was having him do something. But again, I'm not part of the praise team. Y'all don't want to hear me two steps back. You don't want to hear it, right? But I'm thinking, okay, so do I raise my hands? What, what do I do? Do I try to speak in tongues? Never done that before. What do you do? Because it's a football game. In my world, there were limitations. Does God even make it out here? I believe omnipresent, yes, absolutely, because that's what's written on the pages. <laughs> Did I know that with my life? Here's a guy, again, who I knew to be a leader, who I knew trusted God, saying, hey, man, if you really want, don't go to the trainer, get up, start walking down this sideline, praising the Lord with your mouth. And I got up and I tried and I just got up off the bench, turned left, and I thought, I think the first thing I thought was, Lord, I really don't know how to do this. But I started trying. And it couldn't have been a whole two minutes before I had turned back, walked up to my defensive coordinator, and I said, I'm, I'm ready to go back in the game. There was no pain. Do I know that if this guy doesn't choose to be faithful with what God had entrusted to him. Wow. Did I tell y'all this was a Super Bowl season? I'm sorry, we started out talking about football. Well, this is good football. This is the best I know. Charles Mann. Anybody know that name? Charles Mann was the man. He was 6'6", six, six, about 280, uh, this is big muscles, man. I'm talking this is like muscles on this guy. I'm walking in. I wanted to be Charles Mann with Daryl Green speed. Walking into the weight room after a, a meeting, and uh, it gotten kind of late. Charles is walking out of the weight room, and he puts his hand in my chest. He stopped me, and he said, whoa, 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 where are you going? I'm thinking that's... I wanted to be like him. Um, where am I going? And so I kind of gestured towards the weight room, and he said, Danny, man, go home. Go home. He said, you know, Danny, this is the time of year, man, that our wives, our families get to see very little of us. He said, man, you can do this anytime. Go home. Excuse me, miss, will you stand up for us one more time? Y'all can do that clap thing one more time. I'm glad I went to the house. Yeah, 30 years, seven kids later, I'm glad that guy told me to go to the house. Here's the deal. There's a God prompt in there. That wasn't just Charles Mann. That was God using a guy, that guy choosing to be available to say, I will hold you accountable as a believer. Go home. I later saw this in scripture. Genesis 18:18. 18, 18. <laughs> it's at the tree of at Mamre, and it's like God's having conversation with himself, Holy Spirit, whatever God does, <laughs> it's okay with me, but he says, should I tell Abram what I'm about to do? He's about to torch Sodom and Gomorrah. He says, but should I tell Abram what I'm about to do? For surely Abraham, I'm sorry, will become a great nation. 
because, some translations say for, he will teach his children and his household after him the things that I, God, have spoken to him. Got any men in the house? Any men that are okay with being men? Please raise your hands up like real, real high. See, when I was wanting to make the first book of football and be that guy, God was saying, listen, there comes a time when I want you to go home and be faithful because I want to do some things through you. And I get to look at this Abraham thing and think, you know, his charge was to be faithful. Go home. We don't see that as you know, the major leagues of being faithful. Go home and bless your people. It's, whoa. That's different. That's good football. That's what that is. It's good football. So we get to go to Minneapolis, Minnesota to play a Super Bowl. Again, I'm cursed one more time. We gotta go, go into snow for real snow to have a week of celebration and you can't even go outside, right? But we made it. We had some outstanding leaders with that football team. The most those guys would ever do would, say, would, would be to say, listen, trust the script. Trust the script. Stick to the game plan. Do whatever it is that the coaches have devised for us to do. The more deacons we have on the same page, I'm sorry, goes that deacon to thing. The more of our guys that we have on the same page trying to work out this mission, the more power, the more energy we're going to have with our, not just our leadership, but with everybody. That was all we did. That was it. Fight your guts out to do what we said we were going to do and watch the thing work. Hear me again. It makes for good football. Who's going to win tonight? The team that can probably pull off more of that than the other team. Easy? No. No. Each person is going to have <laughs> what we refer to as the enemy right across from them to try and keep you from carrying out whatever your responsibility is. Does that sound biblical? Wow. In each position, every position in here, you've got an enemy that's going to be faithful to try to knock you off stride. According to the Bible, try to kill you. He's serious. This is the beauty of playing it out, though, in kind of pseudo Pauls, where, it, to be honest, again, it, it, it really doesn't matter that much. I'd love to see Patrick Mahomes win the Super Bowl this evening. Love to see that happen. In the big picture, I want to encourage you guys love your neighbor as yourself. One more time. That's good football. So I didn't mention yet that I got knocked out in the Super Bowl. Anytime I look up and see lights like this, it actually reminds me of the Metrodome. <laughs> Sleeping on the carpet. And well, who put all these lights in, the, in my room? Oh, <laughs> I'm not in my room. I'm at the Super Bowl. So you scramble to try to get up off the turf, <laughs> hoping... The TV didn't just pick that up, but it's embarrassing moments when you get <laughs> knocked out in the Super Bowl. <laughs> but the clock is winding down, fourth quarter, and I um, just don't feel that. Which the game is well in hand for us. We, we've pretty much won it, three minutes or so left in the game, and um, I don't know if it was that much time, but clock is winding down, and our side of the stadium obviously is going crazy. Our sideline is going crazy. I'm just not feeling what other folks are expressing. 
I'm just, I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm glad we're on the winning end of the thing. Don't get me wrong. But I'm not, I did jubilation, if you will. Maybe it just hadn't hit me yet. <laughs> and so I just decided to ask the Lord, Lord, is, is this it? Is this it, man? What, what's, what's this really about? And just as that thought came across my mind, my eyes were directed down the sideline right to a guy that had been here and decided to share his livelihood with me. And I see Clarence Vaughn standing at the end of our defensive side in street clothes. He had been deactivated. All in all, I didn't say this, but uh, Alvin Walton during the season had gotten an injury. I was moved into uh, the starting position as a strong safety. And Clarence Vaughn was, had been released, but he was brought back to the team. That in itself was enough <laughs> for me because I saw the guy's faithfulness. And then I saw what I thought was maybe the final reward. He gets to come back to the team after Alvin the Killer got hurt. That day, I had a couple of scriptures that I wanted to share with you guys, but all in all, it's, it's on sharing. You know, what does God do in response to our willingness to open up and bless other people? You guys can Google search that, but <laughs> all in all, I'm seeing it. There's Clarence Vaughn standing on that sideline in street clothes. Never played a play, but a part of the team. That day, he was awarded his second Super Bowl championship. Never played a down. Just God doing what God says he will do in response to us doing what we're supposed to be committed to doing. It started with love your neighbor as yourself. God bless you guys. God is so much bigger than football. Amen. I, I love your story, Danny, because in your story I see the struggle, but I also see the faithfulness of God. And you give him glory, and we give him glory and praise today. I, I love one of the things you shared with me last night when we were having dinner was how the Washington Redskins and Coach Gibbs and his staff, they were real. They didn't just talk Christianity, they meant it. And I loved how you shared when there was an injury on the field. The trainers, Jesse, get this, the trainers would purposefully walk slow to the injured player on the field to give the rest of the team a chance to pray. They wanted them to pray before the medical attention got there because they knew the healing power, the awesome power of God. Wow. Danny, thank you for sharing your story. Because your story gives us great hope in knowing that God's called us to run a race. And chances are that race isn't going to go like we want it to go, but God's got a glorious purpose and plan. Hey, let me ask you to do something, if you would. Let's stand together as we close this morning. I want to ask you to stand with every head bowed and every eye closed. I just want to, I want to pray for you who came in here this morning. You came in with a burden on your heart. You came in with a struggle. You came in asking God to give you encouragement. And maybe this morning you just want to raise your hand and say, Yeah, Pastor, I'm in that category. I need prayer. I want to ask you, would you just lift your hand up? Because I want to pray for you. I want to pray. I want to pray a general prayer for those who, who have a struggle, a, a burden, those who are hurting, those who are looking for answers. God bless you. Thank you. You can put your hand down. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you and we praise your name. We've come here today to celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ. We've come here to celebrate the hope that we have in you. 
And in this room this morning are burdens. In this room this morning are sorrows. In this room this morning there are concerns. And so God, with each hand that was lifted, Lord, we pray for those individuals. And we pray, God, that you would do a great work in their life. I pray, God, that having heard the message this morning, all of us would be reminded of your goodness, of your faithfulness, and how even in the valleys, God, you are at work. And we pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Maybe you're here this morning and you, you came in and you've heard a lot about this Jesus. You've heard about the sinner's prayer. You've heard about a personal relationship with the God who's created all things. Yes, the God who has created you. The Bible says God knew you before he even formed you in your mother's womb. The Bible says that your sin, my sin, separated us from the God who created us, the God who loves us. But God sent Jesus to the cross to die for our sin. I want to ask you a question this morning. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, yet you may know church, you may know religion, but you don't know Jesus. If you would like to know Jesus this morning, I want to ask you to do something. Nobody is going to uh, uh, make fun of you. Nobody's going to do anything other than celebrate, but our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. If you would like to know more about Jesus and what it means to have a personal relationship with Him, would you raise your hand? Father, in Jesus' name, God, we have gathered in this place to give you honor and glory. Lord, I'm so thankful that on a day when it seems all of the country's attention will be toward a football game, the church of Jesus Christ is reminded on this day that the most important thing is a personal relationship with you and that we can have that relationship not through our good works, not through our own efforts, but by faith and by faith alone in what you did, Father, in sending your Son, the Lord Jesus, to the cross. And there he took upon himself my sin, our sin. And he paid the penalty. He died on an old rugged cross, but on the third day he rose again. That's the glorious gospel. And because of that, as Jesse has said, we are on the winning team for all who believe. We praise you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Hey, God bless you for being here with us this morning. You know, I, I know you'd love to come up to Danny and talk to Danny. Um, COVID is kind of a strain. This is strange. Um, instead, we're going to be we're going to honor what we do, and that is social distancing. Um, but Danny, I want to say thank you for being here with us. Thank you. God bless you for sharing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, David. Thank you for being here. Thank you for reminding us of, again, what's important. Hey, let me ask before we go, just because I always like to know, how many of you are actually pulling for the Chiefs? How many of you are pulling for the Buccaneers? How many of you just don't care? All right, we got a lot of those here. All right, all right. Hey, but this we do care about. Jesus is Lord, amen? Jesus is Lord. Hey, God bless you. At this time, I'm going to dismiss this section right here. This section right here. To my right, the middle right section, the middle left section, I guess, depends upon which side you're looking at. We're going to let this section go first. Oh, by the way, if you have children in the back, you certainly can be dismissed at this time because we want you to go and retrieve your children. Thank you for letting us uh, share with your children the story of Jesus. So if you have children in the back.